Bangladesh faces existential threat in the face of the challenge of climate change. As a matter of fact, Bangladesh is a frontline state in the face of climate change. Uh, one of the issues that is becoming critical, as the sea level rises, it is estimated as per the IPCC's report that Bangladesh eventually will lose up to 17 to 20 percent of its land mass to the rising sea. So that is a very large portion of land to be lost for a very small country with extremely high density of population. And the Bangladeshi uh, government's country strategy paper on climate change, when it analyzes this problem, talks about a potential climate refugee population of 20 million and above. That's a very large population of climate refugees from a single country. So what we anticipate in analysis that when there is a such large case displacement, it is certainly going to destabilize the country because of the fact that Bangladesh, given the small size and high density of population, does not have the space and the capacity within the country to absorb this displaced number of people. We are bordered by India on all three sides. So the only potential area for transboundary migration will be towards India. But we already see that India has unilaterally fenced the border between Bangladesh and India all along the border in the 4,300 kilometers. So therefore, a fenced border, which is heavily guarded by the Indian side, and their attempt by climate migrants to cross into that country, this could result in a state of tension and eventually conflict. So we see great potential for destabilization internally and spillover migration into neighboring India and beyond with the potential for tension and conflict that could not only destabilize Bangladesh, but could also have the potential to destabilize the South Asian region. This large-scale migration potential, either from Bangladesh or for any other parts of the world, will need regional and international mechanisms to cope with it. No single country can cope with such large number of displaced people, so we need an international understanding and mechanism how we can manage and cope with this sort of a large-scale movement of displaced people. In terms of the internal capacity of the Bangladeshi state, the Bangladeshi state does not have such large absorption capacity to cope with this kind of displaced people. So I think we have to look beyond the country. I'm also pointing out here that as we talk about the security implications of climate change and the security dimensions of climate change, we are now in a better position to identify many of the key threat areas that could be from food security to human migration and displacement, could be water security, could be a combination of various areas where security could be impacted. But what we are not currently identifying and assessing, what should be the response mechanism, what should be the preparedness of states, what should be the preparedness level at the, region, at the level of the region and the international system. Those are the areas where I think we need to focus more so that we have an integrated response mechanism at various levels. One aspect that comes to my mind as the chairman of the Global Military Advisory Council on, on Climate Change, we certainly know that there will be a definite role of the military in the response mechanism. But we certainly don't see that the military has been given that kind of a specific role for which it should be prepared. The militaries are not normally trained to cope with the challenges of climate change. But if they have to be given a task, which I presume they will be, because the military is a key asset in the hands of most governments, certainly in the hands of resource scarce, vulnerable and weak states. So the military certainly will be pulled in with a big role to play. But the military, unless it is given a mission now for which they will be need to retrain, retool, and they have to be having a specific mission, the military certainly will not be in a position to play the right kind of a role when it's called for. So I would urge that countries must assess their needs for response to climate security. This must be integrated to the regional and international system. And wherever there is a role for the military, both at the national level and at the international level, those roles must now be assigned to the military so that they are prepared to play the right kind of a response role when they call for.